Hi, my name is Bryony. Uh, I'm a condensed matter physicist. Uh, I completed my degree under the supervision of Professor Michelle Simmons, uh, who won 2018 Australian of the Year. Uh, so in this topic, uh, we're looking beyond the basics at Lagrangians and Hamiltonians. So I'm going to start off by introducing you to this idea called the Lagrangian. But even before we get into that, I want to step back and think about what do we mean when we talk about like describing a system. So if we have a system, be it a pendulum, a car rolling along a track, anything, uh, the way we describe it is by its position, its velocity, and its acceleration. And all those things normally we find through the equations of motion. So have a look at this system here. This is a cart, so a large mass on this track. We're going to assume it slides without friction. And underneath it we can see there is a string with a mass tied at the end. So we can see that as, if I bring this back here and I then push it forward, you can see that as this string moves, that it affects the motion of the cart. As the cart moves, it affects how the, how the mass at the end moves. So a system like this is pretty complex. Uh, if I asked you to derive for me the you know, position, velocity, acceleration as a function of time for this, could you do it? Because if you could, please let me know because I haven't even bothered trying because it would be a horrendous problem. So instead, we need to have a different way, a nice and prettier way. So in the 18th century, a dude called Pierre-Louis Maupertuis came up with this idea that is uh, any physical system will follow a path of least length. Basically, Mother Nature is lazy and does, and does as little work as possible. So it actually turns out that you can generalize this not, to, not just physical systems traveling along a, um, a path, um, you can actually generalize it to anything, this principle of least action, which is that kind of any system undergoing some change, whatever, um, the, it, it will behave in such a way that the action is minimized. So we can define action this fancy way, with s is the integral from t1 to t2, where t1 is like our initial time, t2 is the final time, so that would be t1 and then maybe t2 as it's moving. Uh, L is our Lagrangian, which I'll be discussing later, and dt is obviously time. So this equation looks scary, but it's actually really beautiful and combines a lot of really cool things in physics. So don't be scared of it, uh, and even more don't be scared of it, because we're now going to put it away and just look at this L. So this L is this magic Lagrangian, the thing that I've been promising will explain this a lot nicer than our ugly Newtonian mechanics can. So our Lagrangian actually is not defined using our normal position, acceleration, velocity naturally. Um, you can start with a function um, and then up do some cool tricks to it to make turn it into a Lagrangian. And if you've done any engineering or economics, you've probably played around with that. Um, but the nicest way that we do it in physics, at least, uh, is by the energy. So when Maupertuis first find his principle, um, he used this quantity t and said this quantity t is minimized, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it turns out this quantity t is actually our kinetic energy. So we can then define our kinetic energy. Instead of using k, we use t, because we like to be special sometimes. Uh, we also use um, need to involve our potential energy. Our potential energy, in this case, we'll take as v. So we can define our Lagrangian quite simply as L equals t minus v, where t is our kinetic energy and v is our potential energy. So before we get started into actually finding the Lagrangians, uh, I'm just going to give you a little note on some notation. So we remember from earlier in this uh, course um, that we can express the velocity and the acceleration as derivatives uh, of the position. So we know that our velocity is ds dt, where s is our position. And we can say that a is dv dt. So the derivative of position with respect to time is the velocity. The derivative of velocity with respect to time is the acceleration. So um, you could also remember that another way of writing this a bit simpler is by writing a little dot on the top. So s with a little dot means the derivative of s with respect to the time. So I could also write this as v with a little dot above it. But v is also s with a little dot, so literally all we do to indicate that it's the second derivative is just put two dots. So one dot, first time derivative, two dots, second time derivative. This is all well and good, but we really want to um, have a think about it in terms of our x and our y components. Um, so if we have a think, we know that, well, vx is dx dt 
x dot cool so we know that the y is y dot cool so if we think about I have a velocity here with our vx and our vy please pretend that these are straight uh, I'm not very good at drawing as you can see this is my overall velocity so this should be a right angle and just from Pythagoras we know that to find the magnitude of this um, vector it's just the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. In other words we can write v is equal to the square root of x dot squared plus y dot squared. So why am I showing you this? Uh, it's because we write our kinetic energy we write k is equal to a half mv squared. However we want to write it in terms uh, of the derivatives of our position. So it's, uh, it's best when you're working with Lagrangians to try to limit yourself to as few variables like this as possible. You can also write this uh, as a half m and then square root of x dot squared plus y dot squared all squared square roots cancel out and we get k is equal to a half m bracket x dot plus y dot and both of them are squared. So now let's have a look at finding the Lagrangian uh, of a couple of systems. So I've got Lagrangian written up here. So we've got L is equal to T, which is the kinetic energy, minus V, which is the potential energy. So now let's have a look at this first system. This is a pretty simple one. It's just an object falling from rest uh, under the influence of a gravitational field. So you've done a lot of this already. Um, I just wanted to show you this kind of as a sanity check, just to prove to you that yes, Lagrangian mechanics really does just give you exactly what Newtonian mechanics does, just in a different way, and in some cases, uh, a slightly easier one. So, we know that L is equal to T minus V, so our first port of call is to find T. So, this is only, the system's only got one object, it's just got this one ball falling down here, and we know that the kinetic energy of that is just, of an object is going to be a half M V squared. Remembering that, in fact, uh, we can write our velocity in terms of our position, and we know that the velocity is entirely in the y direction, we can write this as a half m y dot squared. So now, looking at the potential energy, I'm sure this will come as no surprise to you that it is the gravitational potential energy. So that's simply written as m g y. So putting all of these together, I can write my Lagrangian L, is equal to a half m y dot squared minus m g y. So that is the Lagrangian for a object falling uh, under a uniform gravitational field. Now let's have a look uh, at the system that we saw earlier in the video, which is a cart sliding along a track with uh, a pendulum hanging underneath. So we're going to use um, the variable big M for the mass of the cart and big X for its position, because its position in the y-axis will stay the same. And we're going to use little m for the mass of the pendulum, and we're going to use little x and little y for its position variables. Now, because we have two things that will be uh, in motion, our cart and our pendulum, we're going to need two parts to our kinetic energy. So, we know the kinetic energy of this is simply given by a half, mv a half mv squared, where v is its velocity. So, if we write t here, we can go, okay, well, first of all, we need to have the big cut, so m big x dot squared. And now we need to add on the kinetic energy of this little bit. So, that would be a half little m v squared. So, this v, however, will be different from this, uh, as it will be the vector sum of your x and your y velocities. So we can write that as a half little m and then x dot squared plus y dot squared. So that's our kinetic energy. Now we want to look at our potential energy. So this first mass doesn't have any potential energy as far as we care. It's only this mass down here and can you guess what it is? If you guess gravitational potential energy, you're correct. So its potential energy will be equal to m g y. So putting that all together, 
we have L is equal to a half big M x dot squared plus a half M little x dot squared plus little y dot squared minus MGY. So that is the Lagrangian for this system here.